machines here. Down the pit straight into that very fast first turn. Took a long, long time to get by Robbie Gordon. And Bozell will not make it any easier at all. Boisel, of course, knows that this is not a battle that he particularly should engage. No, certainly he does not need to have any contact with a Mansell. So if he saw him making the lunge down the inside, the clever, sensible thing to do for Boisel is just to let him go on his way. Update now on fourth place, Robbie Gordon. Gary? Well, it's been an interesting day for Robbie Gordon, who started 15th. A.J. Foyt sitting in the scoring stand. A quick word with him a few moments ago. There was the early contact with Johansson that broke off one of the end plates on the wing. That's affected the handling a bit on this final pit stop coming up here in about eight laps. They'll try to dial a little more wing in to give him a little better uh, grip on the racing circuit. But all in all, for the young man who finished third in the season over in Australia, he's got a chance for maybe his best finish in quite some time, Paul. Robbie Gordon runs in fourth, about seven seconds behind Raul Boisel, just ahead of him. So let's take a look at the running order at the conclusion of 50 laps with the interval back from the leader. We'll take you through the field here. The real key, of course, is we watch for 18th spot, currently occupied by Nigel Mansell as he's trying to carve one of those laps of the two off. And then he has a whole lap to make up, but of course, part of what he would like to see is another full course yellow after he gets in front of Fittipaldi. Difficult to see on this car. Look at Gordon kicks the dirt up, but this car this weekend has the little winglets, which was the development that Dick Simon came up with. Now all the Lola runners have it. Little winglets on the front of the side pod, which actually allows the, the airflow to be different under the car, creates more downforce, and Gordon used this to help him get rid of some of his understeer this weekend. Well, we now have 52 laps complete. Let's go up to Bobby Rahal again. Rahal runs in seventh place. Right now, we're looking at a car propelled by a Chevrolet engine, but the announcement this weekend is definite that all of that will change. We're talking Honda power in this car for next year. Great to see another manufacturer take their product onto the racetrack and do battle with the Chevrolets and the Fords. Lots of speculation as to whether this would go ahead or not. There was some argument about the rules. However, Honda said yes, it will pitch its hat into the ring. And we all eagerly await the uh, anticipated first runs next year in next year's cars. Of course, they've tested that engine extensively in a car this year. Mike Groff driving much of the testing, including at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And uh, the spies that sneak out to those tests say that the engine sounds drastically different. I ask Honda, well, why does it? Not a chance of them telling us. It's, it's just a 161 cubic inch turbocharged engine, and that's it. So now Fittipaldi begins to encounter some traffic with pit stop flying ahead. Jan Vikas, how soon? That's right, Paul. Five or six laps from now, we'll see cars on lap 58 or lap 59. That first full course caution that we had made teams pit two or three laps earlier than they hoped. You know you can only go 30 laps at the absolute maximum. That means if they stop at 59, they have to get all that fuel economy. As they closed up on Mark Smith, you saw that Scott Goodyear really picked up a tremendous advantage. Close goes right down to the rear wing of Emerson Fittipaldi. And now Scott Goodyear tries to work that traffic to his advantage. And Goodyear has nothing to lose. He's not in this championship fight. Emerson has to be a little bit cautious because remember, this is falling his way at the moment with Manson being out of the championship fight. But he's got to be careful. It's actually allowing Goodyear to close up here. Scott Goodyear, of course, one of those that you saw at the beginning of the coverage. Look at this. 
Boy, look at the situation here with Goodyear. Substantially faster on the last lap. Might be a little misleading considering the fact that they were running in traffic, but Goodyear very definitely putting on a charge, and he's a fellow that wants to try and show off here in the last couple of races because that McKenzie sponsorship goes away at the end of the season. And that was a very close call with Machusta because I'm not sure he saw Emerson go down the inside. We saw Machusta turn down. He realized Emerson was there, and then he altered his line and came back up again. That could be a hard stopper for the Penske driver. So the fight here has come back to the front of the field with Scott Goodyear in a very solid pursuit of the defending champion here at Mid-Ohio, Brazil's Emerson Fittipaldi, who for the moment has picked up not only the lead of the race, but an advantage in the championship fight. Pioneer Electronics 200, it is still Emerson Fittipaldi out in front. As they came through traffic a few seconds ago, Goodyear was very close, but now they've separated again. Marco Greco was in front of both of them, very wisely got out of the way and let the leaders come through. And Marco Greco having probably his best race of the year. Look at Mansell slices down the inside, takes two cars in one. I'm sure they saw him coming, but Greco and the Team Losey car run by Dennis McCormick, I'm sure delighted with their performance so far. But all of this passing, none of it for position, Mansell still remains well back in the field and two laps behind the lead of the race. The fight is here at the front. Fittipaldi, who came to this track, pretty well out to lunch on the setup, finally asked Paul Tracy's team, what are you doing with the car? He took Tracy's setup, and that immediately put some speed into the car. Tracy, of course, led in the early going here, but now it is Fittipaldi after Tracy spin off the course and ending his day that leads, but he's being strongly challenged by Goodyear. And Emerson Fittipaldi now locks up the bonus point for leading the most laps in this race in that badly needed point. He needs anything he can get. If they would, uh, would score the race as we are right now, then Mansell will still lead with a points lead, but 169 points to 156. And so Mansell, because of that mistake early in the race, will fall 21 points behind from where he was when he came into this day. There's Fittipaldi as we look at the Valvoline race re recap after 55 laps. Tracy and Fittipaldi, the leaders. So the Penske team very powerful on this course. Cars out of the race. Pretty critical key names there. So back watching the leader, the four car of Brazil's Emerson Fittipaldi. When Emerson gets clear road, this car is clearly faster. The last lap he did was 115.6 miles an hour, over almost a mile an hour quicker than Scott Goodyear. So in clear air, in clear racetrack, Emerson does have the measure of Goodyear at the moment. 57 laps complete. 31 laps since Emerson Fittipaldi made his last pit stop, so we will keep an eye on the Penske team to see what they will be doing. Scott Goodyear's team has decided it's time already to come in. Jan is there. Goodyear comes in, and they will have to take on every bit of fuel on this car because he's going to have to go 31 laps. The tires are changed. They're waiting. They're waiting. They have to take all this fuel. That's a long way to go. He's down. Everything's done. They didn't make any changes. Scott Goodyear underway. Let's go to Gary. Robbie Gordon has just come in on this sequence. We just got a call that Emerson Fittipaldi will come in also on the next time by. They service Gordon. He was running in fourth place on what should be the final stop, but it's going to be very, very close in terms of is there enough fuel to go the remaining distance. Real close, Paul. Mario Andretti also came into the pits, as did Raul Boisel. You saw that Mansell was lined up behind Scott Goodyear on the racetrack, continuing to run at speed. There is Gordon coming back out, and he picked up a position coming out of there as the pit stop more efficient and got around Boisel. Emerson Fittipaldi leading the race, but Rick Reinemann and the crew is waiting. He's the chief. He'll keep track of the right front of that car, as here is Fittipaldi on the pit road, Gary Gerald. We watch with the crew. The nose is in sight. He slides in a little hot. Has to hit the brakes hard. There was concern about temperatures, but it looks like it is stabilized. He's able to get in one more lap than some of the others. That could be critical if they get the full 40-gallon complement of fuel in. Fittipaldi hoping to win here for the third time. He's down. He's rolling. 15.7 seconds for M.O. 
Mark Smith also in, Griard in, Bobby Rahal now into the pits, Brian Till into the pits as well. So this the theoretical last stop of the race for everyone. Unless, of course, it's a mechanical difficulty, this should take care of fuel and tires. And look at the gap he now has on Scott Goodyear. Goodyear stopped first, but obviously the in and out lap and his time on pit road was considerably longer than Emerson Fittipaldi's. And during those stops, too, Mansell got around Goodyear. So now if he can get around Fittipaldi, he gets himself one lap behind the lead of the race. Terribly frustrating day for Mansell. Uh, he needs lots of help. If he can get by Emerson, he needs a yellow flag immediately. Have the pace car pick up Emerson and then make up that full lap because there's not enough laps left for him to make it up. Considering the way the day's gone, though, that's not outside the realm oh, yeah. of possibility. Two full course cautions early in the race. Goodyear's stop was 17 seconds. Emerson Fittipaldi in at 15.7. The in and the out, the end of the tail. Yeah, right, but the in and the out lap is also the key. When you put on cold tires, how fast can you get around on that first lap? That is a key. Second place, Ari Leyendijk comes in. Jan Vigas? Leyendijk comes in, but he has an advantage because he's in a lap later. He won't have to take on all the fuel. They're going to time the fuel so they don't have to take every last drop. They're going to wait till they get just enough, and he'll be underway. All the tires are on. They're waiting for that call from Chip Ganassi, the team owner. Ari is looking up at him and saying, okay, 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 I'm out of here. So Ari Leyendijk back into the fight, relinquishing, of course, the lead. And, of course... What we need to see is where is Mario? He couldn't make the pass on the racetrack. Perhaps stopping one lap later will allow him to make the pass in the pit lane. I believe it will. Like I said, the lead relinquishing second place in doing so. Fittipaldi continues to lead this race. He is full on fuel now. The methanol fuel has fresh tires and will continue on. But you see the sun comes out over the mid-Ohio sports car course. So now the Indy cars have yet another factor to contend with. And Emerson Fittipaldi continues his lead in the Pioneer Electronics 200. Scott Goodyear from Canada runs in second place and then Robbie Gordon in third, Raul Boisel in fourth, and Ari Leyendijk now in fifth place just ahead of Bobby Rahal. So it was actually our, uh, Mario Andretti who got the bad run during that pit stop because, as you can see, Rahal and Leyendijk got by, but now Mario has Alonso Jr. all over the, his rear wing. And Mansell is up to 15th. There's Alonso Jr. alongside Mashushta. And there's Mario. So the fight now is between Mario and Al Jr. Mansell up to 15th place, still three position before he can earn a PPG point so different than his previous performances on a day that would have started potentially with Mansell leaving here with the championship it will go on at least to Nazareth perhaps even the final race of the season at Laguna Seca Al Jr's car you can clearly see it under braking and turn in seems to enter and get to the apex faster than some of the other Lolas that was one of the items that Alan Merkins addressed when he changed the rear geometry on this car to try and keep a better balance all through the apex. It's obviously been successful because since they put this new suspension on the car, Al Jr. has been much happier and much faster. The battle for seventh between Al Unser Jr. and Mario Andretti. Derek, Jan mentioned it early in the going that many of the cars, they've unhooked some of the anti-roll bars. I call them sway bars. Why do they do that here? Here, this track doesn't have a lot of mechanical grip. That's what you're after when you make the car very soft. Mechanical grip. As Al Jr. slices down the inside of Al. Little Al moves to the inside of Mario. Mario on a nice sweeping approach to the outside, but not fast enough as he breaks down off of that long straight off of the keyhole into the S's, and Al Unser Jr. picks up seventh place. And now seems to have have a bit of advantage, a bit of power to pull away. So Allinger Jr. will set sights on Bobby Rahal, and Rahal isn't that far ahead. He isn't that far ahead, and Al Jr. under these conditions is very good, not prone to making mistakes at all. So the grip that this car seems to enjoy down through the apex of these corners as he peels off into the pit lane. So Allinger Jr. heads.